I'm Dr. Andrea Maxim, naturopathic doctor here and the creator of the Maxim Movement. And I've been discussing in a number of different videos um, the ins and outs of food sensitivities. But one thing that I promised in one of the earlier videos was that sometimes it's not as simple as just looking at the most common food sensitivity foods like gluten, dairy, eggs, and so on. Sometimes it's these other weird products of foods or cross reactions that our body is creating that's also stimulating a lot of the gut problems that we're having and it's just not something that's in the forefront because we just don't think about it. So one of these things is lectins. Now lectins are actually found in different foods like beans, cereal grains, seeds, nuts, potatoes, and if they're not cooked properly, these lectins can actually bind to um, already disabled or damaged epithelial cells in the gut lining and actually trigger more of an immune response. And as opposed to triggering the immune complex response like a uh, true food sensitivity does, it actually causes um, histamine release from mast cells and it starts creating more protein di digestibility issues and starts draining the body of energy and creates, of course, the same type of things we find with leaky gut. Yeah, malabsorption, impaired immune system function, as well as poor cell growth and, of course, poor healing because these, this fire is constantly being turned on. So you really want to make sure that if you are going to be eating these foods, again, beans, seeds, nuts, potatoes, and so on, or other foods that contain what is called a lectin, if they're not cooked properly, they can actually um, further exacerbate your already uh, inflamed gut and can also help prevent true healing. So this is an example of if someone has been avoiding gluten forever because they know that they have a sensitivity towards it but they're just not feeling that well or despite the hard work that they've done their digestive tract doesn't seem to be getting any better. So you want to be looking into this thing about lectins as well. Now, for those that have seasonal allergies, we need to start looking at some cross-reactivity that can happen between foods and pollens. So for instance, if you have a birch tree allergy, the pollens that we're allergic to from the birch tree actually are quite similar to the pollens from apples or cherries or carrots or peanuts. So sometimes having these cross-reactive foods to allergens can also potentiate food sensitivity-like reactions that seem to get worse dif during different seasons. Ragweed, for instance, is very similar or can be cross-reactive with bananas, honey, melon, chamomile tea even, and even sunflower seeds or grass allergies can be cross-reactive with melons, oranges, tomatoes, watermelon, wheat, and even Swiss chard. So if you find during these grass or ragweed um, peaks in the season when those allergies are the worst, you may also want to stay away from these other foods because they could make your seasonal allergies much harder to treat. And here's the complete list here. Now I promised in my other videos that I would teach you how you can start to heal your gut. Remembering the four R's of healing the digestive tract is one, remove, to repair, and we certainly don't want to be um, putting that new coat of paint, which is re-inoculate, re without filling in those holes, and then finally you can re-challenge. So the repair phase is really the most important, and I find the most underestimated step, and a lot of people like to skip over it because they just think, well, if I stop punching holes in the wall, then everything's going to start getting better. So with regards to healing the gut, what I always encourage is high, high dose fish oils. So at minimum, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of EPA per day. I also encourage high dose vitamin D for a short period of time. So anywhere from three to 5,000 to maybe even 10,000 units of vitamin D. Of course, depending on your deficiency and how long these symptoms have been around. 
And then glutamine powder is my number one go-to. So glutamine has this wonderful affinity to the gut lining, and it helps to bring those immune cells nice and tight together, healing those tight junctions so that the cells are, are very, very close and snug, and they're not allowing large food particles into the blood. Because what happens when food gets into the blood? It goes everywhere. So we always want to make sure that that gut is nice and healed. And then there's certainly other things you can do, like slippery elm powder, and licorice root powder which adds this nice coat of slime to really help put that inflammation out and then acupuncture is a wonderful adjunctive thing and then finally of course probiotics to add that final sort of layer of good healthy immune cells to continue to protect you and protect your gut from further damage. So I hope you found these uh, videos to be very helpful. If you missed any, certainly go back into my YouTube channel and find the other ones all listed food sensitivities with a different subtitle as we've had um, four different videos for you to watch. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, I love to hear from you. Please let me know either through my website www.themaximmovement.com or certainly just adding your comments below. And as always, have a happy and healthy day.